So, well, let, let me begin by wishing Hubert a happy birthday. You know, so I, I first encountered Hubert when I was a, a graduate student at Cornell and he was visiting to give a talk. And at that time I was reading a really set of important and beautiful papers by him and Frederick Lesage and uh, Paul Fenley, who I think is in the audience, on quantum hall edge physics understood in the context of boundary field theories, particularly boundary sign Gordon. I would say this, this work influenced me immensely. And so when I came to Santa Barbara to work with Andreas Ludwig as a postdoc in the late nineties, I certainly, I took the opportunity to travel down the 101 and, and work with Uber when he was permanently, when he was full time at the University of Southern California. And I, I would say this, the work that I did at uh, Santa Barbara with Uber largely shaped the sort of physics that I, I continue to pursue, or at least want to pursue to this date, to this date. And so I, I think this is a really good place to acknowledge that depth. So let me begin with my, my talk proper. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some recent work that I've been involved in on understanding the evolution of Rennie entropies in field theories that are out of equilibrium. And in particular here, I'm gonna be, I wanna discuss the evolution of the, of Ren, of the Rennie entropies in the sine Gordon model after a quantum quench. And so this work has been done, well, this work started when I visited CISA in 2019 for a month. And so it's, it's quite natural that my two collaborators on this project are Pascale Calabrese, who I think is online, yeah. It's online and and his student Sarah Murciano. So let me set the scene here. I want I want to be so I want to be talking about the evolution of Rennie entropies in the context of quantum quenches of Luttinger liquids, and in particular, I want to imagine a, a, a situation where I have two Luttinger liquids. So I, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but here. Um, I have H1 and H2, which mark the two Luttinger liquids, and then I have them tunnel coupled. And then at, at time, time t equals zero, I quench the coupling, I change the coupling from, from J to, to J1. And, and this is really, I mean, this isn't Luttinger liquid quench, but it's really a quench of sine Gordon because all of the action is happening in the anti-symmetric channel, the, 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 the channel of the difference of the two bosons. The symmetric channel is completely boring. And so I guess in uh, studying this type of quench, we have a couple of experimental motivations. Probably first and foremost are the, the experiments on quenches and cold atomic gases done by Jörg Schmiedmeier's group in Vienna. But, um, and so that will be sort of the, the, the experimental backdrop of, of, of my talk. But you, because bosonic descriptions are ubiquitous for 1D systems, you have bosonic descriptions of spin chains, Hubbard-like materials, quantum wires, and in fact, uh, coupled arrays of such systems. I think uh, the techniques that I discuss here will will have will be more widely applicable to than just to the Schmiedmeier quenches. So, what I'm particularly interested in understanding in this quench are how the the Rennie entropies evolved in time post quench. And I I don't think I need to to remind people of the definition of the Rennie entropies, but for the, the sake of complete, completeness, let me do so. Um, so. So suppose I have a system in some sort of pure state and I divide the system spatially into two parts, A and B, and then you know, I can use standard and standard way of Schmidt decomposition and I can write the, 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 the pure state as a sum of states belonging to the two parts, A and B, and then I can easily trace over B, leaving me the reduced density matrix in A. And then in terms of these coefficients, the Schmidt coefficients, I can easily write down the, the, the nth the, the Ren, Ren, Rennie entropy which is given by this expression down at the, the bottom of the page. And of course, the, the entanglement entropy is given as the analytic continuation of the Rennie entropies. And at least for the purposes of this work, I'm going to be focused on primarily on, on the low line Rennie entry is really the second Rennie entropy. It perhaps it's possible to try to take this analytic continuation and get the 
the entanglement entropy, but I, I think that would be, that's not something we've really explored and it's not clear to me it's possible. Now, in terms of computing the entanglement in our system of two coupled blood angel liquids, we really have those sort of two natural choices about how we can partition the system. We could, on, on the, as on the bottom left, we could partition the system by dividing the, the system into one blood angel liquid on one side and the other blood angel liquid on the other side. And that, in that situation, the entanglement technically is, is pretty simple to, to study. And that's not gonna be our target here. Instead, we wanna imagine cutting across the two Luttinger liquids as pictured on the, on the bottom right. And that is more, more technically challenging to, to deal with. And that, that's gonna be the, the, the focus of this, of this work. So how are, we, how are we gonna actually do this? So part, at least part of the answer lies in using the truncated spectrum approach. And so I, I want to review this quickly to, to sort of set the scene, to sort of just to show you what the, the technical object we need to compute is. Now, the truncated spectrum method is a, is a method invented by Alyosha Zemologikov, and it can, in principle, study any Hamiltonian that, that has a two-part form. The, it has to have a known part, which by known, I mean it, it's some conformal or integral field theory. And here it will be the, 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 the two CFTs describing the two, the, the two uncoupled Luttinger liquids. So the C, the C equals one compact boson. And then the second part, the Hamiltonian has to be some perturbation. And that perturbation here is going to be the, the tunneling between the Luttinger liquids, which is just our, our cosine interaction. Now, typically in this method, we put the system in a, in a, on a ring, or it doesn't have to be a ring. It has to be, you have to put it in a, in a system of finite size. So here we're putting, going to put it on a ring of size of circumference L. And what that does in part is makes the spectrum of H known uh, discrete. And then we can, because we have H known is, because we have complete control over H known, we have complete control over C equals one field theory, we can order the states in, in energy. Now, I think um, it will be crucial here to discuss the space of states of this, of this boson, because this is really the, one of the sort of the objects we're going to have to manipulate or uh, understand the Renyi entropies of. And so here, here's the, the, the mode expansion um, of, the, of, the, of the Bose field. And you can see it has several parts. It has a, a zero mode, a compact zero mode, and it's conjugate momentum. And this zero mode, at least in this representation, can take values between zero and two pi. And it's, it's actually very important that the zero mode be compact. Um, I think approximating it, at least in terms of the quench that I've, I, I'm interested in would be a very bad approximation. And I've thought someone about this, but I won't talk about this, this here because that's somewhat involved. So that, that's really another talk. So there's the zero mode part of the, of the, of the field, and then there's the, the oscillator modes. And so this, the space of states of this, of this theory are built, well, you first construct a set of highest weight states, which are basically formed by acting on the conformal vacuum with the vertex operators. And then you can take those highest weight states and act with some arbitrary number of oscillator modes. And so this, this, this state at the bottom is our base, the, 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 a general state in the, in, in the, in the, in the C equals one CFT. So that's, that's our, our, our basis of state. So um, in terms of uh, the, 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 perturb the perturbation part of the Hamiltonian, because it's just a cosine perturbation, we, we know how to compute exactly the matrix elements of the, of the, of the perturbation. That's, that's very straightforward. And so what this means, because the spectrum is discrete, we can write our Hamiltonian as some in matrix form. Now, because the, 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 the space of states is infinite, our matrix is, 
our Hamiltonian matrix is infinite dimensional. So that's not so useful. But what we can do, which is a reasonable approximation if the perturbing field is relevant, and in, in this particular quench, it will be strongly relevant, we can truncate the spectrum. And so we just, we, we just toss away states above a certain cutoff. And that leaves our Hamiltonian to be finite dimensional, which we can then easily numerically diagonalize and extract the spectrum and, and the matrix elements. Now, um, in cases where the, the perturbation is not so relevant, there are various RG techniques, both analytical and numerical, that one can use to, to ameliorate the fact that you're sort of putting this really crude truncation into the, into the system. But as I say, we won't need to use those here, but if you're interested, you can look at this review article where they're discussed in some details. And of course, all the, the references to the primary literature will be there as well. So how do we now go ahead and use this, this framework of the truncated spectrum approach to study the Rennie entropy? So typically what we'll do here in, in, in this context of a quench will first compute the the using truncated spectrum approach the initial ground state of the system so with this is the system with coupling j we will then compute the post quench set of eigenstates so this will, will compute the set of eigenstates um for 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 this j1 which is not equal to j now, both of these sets of states, both the initial state and the set of post-quench eigenstates are expressed or, or given to us really in terms of our computational basis. And what this means is that we can write the initial state in terms of the computational basis with some set of time-dependent coefficients, which are determined by the, you know, these, these weights are, are what the, is basically the output of the, the truncated spectrum approach. Now, once we have the, the initial state in this form, we can then write, as I do on the bottom, we can write down expressions for the Rennie entropies. Here at the bottom, I've written down the expression for the second Rennie entropy. And it's, it's given in, in this particular form. And so you see that it, it, it's, it's asking us to deal with these sort of these objects of, of mixed density matrices. And so this is, this is really, the, the fundamental object that we have to deal with. So, as I say, we've computed the, the time evolution of our state in terms of the, of the of, in terms of our computational basis. And so, and we've written the, at least the second random entropy as this, this object here in this red box. Now this 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 object is 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 non-standard because I mean typically when we compute Rennie entropies of conformal states all of the all of the states are, well usually you know all of the states are the same but here we have to deal with an object where all the states are different now and 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 not the ground state so of course if 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 these were if all the the, the sides were the same and were some relatively simple excited states, we, we, we could just borrow results from this paper by Alcaraz, Berganz, and Sierra, who, who discussed the entanglement of CFT excited states. If, if instead that we had psi A equals to psi J and psi I prime equal to psi J prime, this type of object in, in the box has been studied in the context of relative entropies. And relative entropy comes about in the context of trying to I guess define some sort of distance metric between different density matrices, different reduced density matrices. And so this, this idea was, I think was introduced by Lakshkari in this PRL. And then um, there's been lots of lots of work on 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 relative entropies, CFTs, including by my collaborator, my collaborators. Uh, Sarah and Pasquale. And so I give one of their, their papers here. There's there's actually quite a few. So this is not a complete list at all on the work of relative entropies. But even this object is, is not quite as general as we need. 
Now, so how do we how do we go about computing such an object? So let me just walk you through how one can do this. And so to do so, you, you can employ path integral representations of the states. And so what is in sort of in a cartoon way, you can see you can write the overlaps of the of general states as path integrals over half infinite half infinite cylinders as pictured here, where the, the operators that we're, we're interested in psi i and psi j are inserted at, you know, t equals infinity or t equals minus infinity in terms of these path integrals. Now, suppose I want to compute the reduced density matrix by, by tracing over subsystem B. So I want to compute this, this object above the green arrow. So in terms of my path integrals, this amounts to partially gluing together these two half infinite cylinders along the length of the system corresponding to B. So I get this type of picture on the right, which is that of a, of a path integral of a full infinite cylinder with a, a discontinuity across the a slit corresponding to the subsystem A. So using these path integral representations, we can easily form products of, of the of row A, the reduced density matrix of A, and then compute the actual, I mean, by then tracing over A, compute the object that we're actually interested in. And you end up here, you can, you can you, the important thing is you end up in doing so up to some normalization, you end up with a four point function involving four operator insertions at, at plus and minus infinite time. Now, this four point function is on a rather funny space time for the second Renyi entropy. I pictured it here. You see that it has, it's a two sheeted Riemann surface with four sets of slits, two slits marked A are identified, and then the the slit phi prime is to be identified with phi double prime. Now, because of the, the magic of conformal maps, we can actually evaluate correlation functions on the space time by just doing a set of conformal maps and turning, turning the system into a correlation function defined on a standard plane. Now, one thing to, to note in computing these kinds of quantities is that really we're not computing a four-point function, but for our bosonic field theory, we're computing an endpoint function because each of these size in terms of an operator state correspondence actually is, is created by some set of, of applications of the current operator, so derivatives of the boson and then some vertex operator. So really it's this equation, it's a correlation function in, in, in the middle of the page, that's the object that we want to compute. Now, this is possible because, because our, our bosonic CFT is relatively simple and, and these correlation functions have, have representations in terms of half means, which are, the, you know, which are objects defined on symmetric matrices and can be considered like the, the cousins of the anti-symmetric Fafians. However, of course, if we were do, looking at a conformal a question a, involving a conformal field theory that was not uh, a free boson, I think we, 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 we computing the objects this this type of four point function would in general be very difficult. But with with the bosons, you can actually make progress. And in particular, you can you can write down closed formula for the for the generalized Renyi entropy. So here, just to show you that it's possible, I've 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 done this for a set of, of four states where there's no vertex operator. So we only have oscillator modes in, in, in the in the in the four states. And you get when you do so, you get uh, uh, an expression like this, which is I, I've, I promised is written in terms of some half nian, where the, the 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 entries into the into the symmetric matrix have this rather unintuitive form. But at least, I mean, I think the the key thing is that, um, I mean, I don't think these formulae are particularly enlightening, but at least you can write them down in closed form, and 
for, for, for the most general states where there are vertex operators involved, you can also write down such, uh, the formula become more complicated, but you can certainly write them down without any real problem. So that's, that's how we were gonna compute the, the Renyi entropies. We're gonna you know, use these types of expressions combined with data coming from truncated spectrum approach to, 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 act, to compute the, the Renyi entropies. So um, let me present now some results. So the particular, I mean, the, the, again, the quench that I'm interested in is of adjusting the, the, the tunnel coupling between two, two Luttinger liquids. And here I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep, make my life really simple. I'm gonna imagine that uh, my, pre-quench state is the two Luttinger liquids that are completely uncoupled. So J equals zero. And then at time T equals zero, I'm going to turn on a coupling. In here, I'm going to, I'm going to show you some, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you some, some analysis of the growth of the second Renyi entropy after the, after the quench. And I'm going to compare this with the growth of the, the order parameter after the quench. So, let me first consider um, our results at short times. At short times, um, we can use unitary perturbation theory. So at short times, and I'm going to work in the limit, the, the, at least the, the experimentally relevant limit for the Schmiedmeier experiments of large K. If I work in the short times in large K and using unitary perturbation theory, I can actually write down relatively simple expressions in terms of uh, for the the Renyi entropy and the evolution of the of the cosine order parameter they're both quadratic in time but there's they have a key difference in terms of their dependence on on the Luttinger parameter one is one over k squared and the 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 Renyi entropy is one over k squared and the cosine is is one over k and what this means physically if you dig into the details of unitary perturbation theory is that the cosine order parameter, the physics, the short time physics of the cosine order parameter are solely governed by the zero mode physics. And so in some sense, um, yeah, you, you, can, you can derive this, this, this expression by completely ignoring the fact that there are oscillator modes in the problem. The problem is really that of the zero mode. So, the pro so at short times, the 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 problem is not quantum field theoretical but quantum mechanical and that actually for the for the cosine order parameter at, at large k that tends to be true for for all times the 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 oscillators off offer a weak dressing of the evolution of the cosine order parameter but don't fundamentally determine its behavior it's really zero mode physics the Renyi entropy on the other hand is quite a bit different this one over k squared is is really indicating, although it's not obvious unless you dig into the algebra, this one over k squared is really indicating that the, the, the oscillator modes, the fact that you're dealing with a quantum field as opposed to just the zero mode are important for the physics. And so in this, in some sense, some weak sense, the Renyi entropy is, is a more quantum field theoretic quantity than the, 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 the order parameter, at least in this context. Now at longer times, so I mean in the in this in the short times, the physics is still you're still in the UV, so you, you you're gonna be sort of dominated by the 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 spectrum of the under the unperturbed conformal field theory. But when at longer times you're gonna you're you're really talking about physics in the IR, so you're gonna be you're gonna be governed by the, the, the physics of the low-lying excitations of the sine Gordon Hamiltonian. And so for the, the as I've said, for the Schmiedmeier experiments, the, the Luttinger parameter K is small is large. And what this means in terms of sine, maybe the sine Gordon language, which we're more familiar with, if I write this in terms of a sine Gordon beta, I get a, a, a very small beta. So I'm in the semi-classical regime of sine Gordon. And the, the spectrum will thus consist of many, many breathers. Not, 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 not two or three, but you know, um, 
maybe on the order of 100 in, in the Schmiedmeier experiments. And, and the saltan and anti-saltan will be very heavy and at least won't figure significantly in, in terms of the quench dynamics as we understand them. And so here at, at, at longer times, I'm presenting, I, I'm, uh, I'm presenting results for both the Renyi entropies that's on the left and on, on of the, the evolution of the cosine operator on, on, on the right. Now, what I've done, I, you see, I'm presenting data for a number of different system sizes and a number, number of different couplings. I've chosen these system sizes and couplings such that the system size times the, the mass of the second breather is roughly constant. And if I do this and I apply scaling correctly, then I should get data collapse, and I do, which is, which is of course good because that indicates that the, the, the numerics is working. And at least you see, you, yeah, you see good scaling collapse out, out to the, it only, it only starts to break down at, at very late times. There's a, there's a couple things you can note about the, the structure of these, of these, of the, of the, say the growth of the, of both the order parameter and the, and the Renyi entropy post quench, you see that there's some set of oscillations and you can, re, you can see, and you can relate these, these oscillations directly to the, the various breather masses. Although, and so it, for this particular value of beta, which again corresponds to a very large K, uh, there are, I think, 86 breathers in the problem, but really only the first four or five matter to the dynamics. And then, and because the, the quench is even, it's only the even breathers that matter. There's only the even, even breathers that get excited. So with that, let me conclude. Um, so I think uh, what I hope to tell you today is I think we've developed some tools that will allow one to compute the Renyi entropies in the context of, of bosonic field theories or systems that can be represented in terms of bosonic field theories. And this amounts to combining data coming from truncated spectrum approach and, and using these generalized Renyi entropies that we've managed to compute. For, for arbitrary excited states and arbitrary combinations of excited states for this, the, for this, the C equals one CFT. Um, we explored, we've used this ability to compute the Renyi entropies to explore the time evolution of the Renyi entropies in, in a quantum quench that's relevant for the experiments being conducted by the, the Vienna group of Jörg Schmiedmeier. And then perhaps is maybe a, a, something that we, we discovered in, in, in this analysis that at least at short times, the, the Renyi entropies are in some sense more field theoretic than the, the order parameter is here. So with that, let me thank you for your attention. And, and I, I, I want to again, wish you bear a happy birthday, and I'm, I'm really sorry that I couldn't be in Paris for, for this. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Robert. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, Fabian. Hello, Fabian. Hi, Robert. Happy birthday. Um, it's your birthday today. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, yeah, so, so my question was, in the experiments, the gases are actually split in instead of joined, and that makes a big difference. So if I understand it, you, in, you, you initialize your, your system in, in uh, two uh, ground states of, 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 of two larger liquids, and then you put on the, the tunnel coupling. So, so yes, that's that's what I'm doing, and I think at least in this 2017 paper, Jorgs, that's what he's doing. No, that's I mean he's prepared. He, you know, that's that was my understanding of that paper. Okay, I think Fabian <laughs> is happy with that for now. <laughs>
I mean, he, he, I mean, he certainly does lots of other quenches. I mean, that's not. I mean, that's just one quench of of this of the of, of this of the system of this Bose gas that he does. But, uh, but I think at least this is in his repertoire. Any other things? Hubert. Hello, Robert. Thank you for your talk. Hello, Hubert. How are you? Uh, you I'm made good. this mysterious remark about the boson having to be compactified. Or maybe it's yes. so mysterious. But what would happen if it were not compactified? Uh, well, you would, you would get the wrong answer. I mean, there, there, because in, in the Schmiedmeier experiments, these very large K, um, which corresponds to very small beta in sine Gordon, you might be tempted to use a semi-classical approximation yeah. mm -hmm. and and replace the cosine by uh, uh, a, a non-compact boson with a mass term, and that won't give you the right results. I see. I understand. Okay. It, it just gives you well garbage <laughs> for this quench. I, I mean, I've looked. I've you know, I've looked at this approximation for this quench, and it just doesn't. It, you get much different results. I see. So that's why you can you really can see this at short it. times in unitary perturbation theory. I see. Okay. It gives well, you the wrong answer. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Hi. I just wanted to ask you something myself. Um, I'm not completely sure, but I suspect the quench that you are doing is probably equivalent to a mass quench in sine Gordon? Um, well, you, you, in, the, in the sense that, you, I mean, uh, you, well, I mean, I could do, I mean, if I, if I, if I had, uh, I mean, I'm quenching from zero mass to finite mass, that, in that sense, yes. In that sense, okay. I mean, I don't know, because I don't know if you're aware, but we did some work, I think last year, uh, myself with David Horvath, and we did some analytic computation where uh, we looked actually uh, at the entanglement evolution after a mass quench in St. Gordon. And we actually uh, derived from an explicit formula for these oscillations you speak about. Um, uh, I mean, it is in perturbation, it's perturbative, so it's for a small quench. But in, mm -hmm. principle, in principle, it might be possible to compare our, our formula, I mean, to actually have a comparison for the both for the um, amplitude and frequency of your oscillations, because the frequency are the solid uh, are the breeder masses, uh, but yes. the, but but we are with our formula we have also access to the amplitudes which are form factors of these twist fields, form particle form factors. So it could be possible to to even do a numerical comparison, perhaps. To what yeah, that would that would certainly be interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean there was, I guess there there's. Mm, I mean, I think so. You're using form factors of the massive basis to okay. to do these computations. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So and that was that. So yeah, so that would um, that was always. I mean, in, in approaching this type of problem, that is always one one definitely one strategy. And so instead of using, I mean, we were we were influenced by the you know uh, my my past experience using the truncated spectrum mm -hmm. approach. And so I was thinking of, of, of the conformal basis. Yeah, yeah, but yes, I, yeah, I think it would be, I think, Elijah, I think it would be very interesting to do the, to make this comparison. Yeah, yeah that's true that you start from mass zero. So I don't know if it would be applicable, but I have feeling maybe, maybe something can be done somehow comparing both things. But uh, thank you for now. And uh, thank you for your talk. Thank you. Thanks, Scott, very much.